Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at how you can determine if a table of values is either linear, quadratic, or exponential. Um, and we are going to tie this back into sequences. Uh, very early on in middle school, you uh, learned they, they had to practice sequences and determining what the next number would be. And they also probably had you identify between a, an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. All right, they were leading you up to this. Um, so in an Algebra 1 class now, you can start tying what you did with sequences into our linear functions, our quadratic functions, our exponential functions. Okay, so if we recall, um, an arithmetic sequence uh, will have a common difference. Okay, it's going to have a common first difference when we look at the table specifically, and that's going to indicate that we have a linear function. Um, I might also um, indicate if you're you know, checking for linear functions in that XY table, and if your X's do not differ by one, they differ by some other number in each one of them, then you're probably definitely going to want to take a look at your slope and check your uh, change in your Y's over your change of your X's just to see if you have a constant slope or not for that linear function. Um, geometric sequences have a common ratio, and so therefore they can be modeled with our exponential function. A common ratio would be um, where you find a pattern of multiplying by the same number over and over and over. All right, now your quadratics, on the other hand, really do not follow um, this arithmetic or geometric sequence pattern at all. Um, what we will have to take a look at to determine if a, a, a set of data is quadratic is we will have to take a look at the common second difference. If it has a common second difference, all right, then you are going to know that you've got a quadratic function. All right, so that's just a little summary and, and some um, things to look for when you're looking at your XY tables. All right, now if we take a look at some specific XY tables here, um, and then we'll go through what some of those different things mean, and it will hopefully start to make be a little bit more clear here. All right, in this first table of values right here, um, first thing I usually do is I just start looking at my differences and see what I get here. All right, so I'm going to look at my Ys, a 12 minus... Um, 20 there is going to give me a negative 8. All right, a 16 minus 12 is going to give me a difference of a positive 4. Okay, let's go ahead and do, do one more here. Common difference here, 18 uh, to 16 is going to give me a common difference there of a plus 2. All right, so I'm not seeing any patterns over here. Let's look over here on my left-hand side, 15. Uh, take away 3, that's going to give me a common difference of a positive 12. Um, 9. Minus 15 is going to give me a common difference there of a negative 6. 6 take away 9 is going to give me a common difference there of a negative 3. Okay, now right off the bat, I would say, okay, well, I don't have a common first difference, so I would maybe miss the fact that this is possibly linear, okay? Um, recalling that a linear function is going to have a constant slope everywhere, I can take a look at my slope. I can take a look at my change in my y's over my change in my x's. All right, so on this first one, my change in my y's there is a negative 8. All right, change in my x's there is a positive 12. Now if I go ahead and reduce that to those terms, I'm seeing I've got a slope there of negative 2 thirds. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. The change in my y's was a positive 4. Change in my x's is a negative 6. If I reduce, I also have a negative 2 thirds slope. All right, let's go ahead and check one more. Um, slope there, change in my y's is going to be a positive 2. Change in the x's there is a negative 3. I have a negative 2 thirds again. Okay, so, you know, not just checking to see if that common difference is in that y column. Go ahead and maybe checking the slope. All right, we'll definitely show you. Oh, yeah, and we could finish it out here if I needed to, but I think this is sufficient that this definitely is a linear model. Okay, so um, looking at our second example here. Okay, like always, I check my differences first here. So um, I'm going to take 2 minus 16 there. I'm going to have a difference of negative 14. Uh, negative 2 minus 2, I'm going to have a difference of negative 4. 4 minus a negative 2, I'm going to have a difference of a plus 6. 20, take away 4 there, I'd have a difference of plus 16. I think that's far enough. All right, now I'm going to, and here again, I'm not seeing any common difference here. Um, real quickly on this side, I'm just adding one. Hopefully that's kind of obvious that you're just adding one on each one of those. So I do have the common difference on the left. Okay, so now I don't really have check slope because negative 14 over 1, negative 4 over 1. I obviously clearly do not have a constant slope here, so it's not linear. Okay, so I've checked these right here, 
is what is referred to as the first difference. Okay, so I've checked that and we've ruled out linear. Okay, now I'm going to start taking a look at the second difference. All right, if I do a negative 4 minus a negative 14, that's a difference of plus 10. All right, a 6, take away a negative 4, that's a difference of 10. 16, take away 6, that's a difference of positive 10. This right here is my second difference. So that's what I was referring to a little bit ago with a second difference, all right? And if we know that we have a common second difference, then we know that we have a quadratic function. So this one, quadratic. Okay, let's take a look at this third one here. Okay, third one, looking down that left-hand side on my axis, hopefully, again, you're seeing just plus 1, plus 1, plus 1 all the way down there, so we don't really have to worry about that. All right, if I do the differences on this one, all right, 11 uh, take away 5 is going to give me a positive 6 difference. 29 minus 11 is going to give me a difference of plus 18. 83 minus 29 <clears throat> is going to give me a positive difference of 54. And 245 minus 83 will give me a positive difference of 162. Okay, so again, with each one of these being ones, I can clearly see not linear. Okay, slope doesn't match. I don't have a common first difference. Okay, well, without writing it down here, I can see, again, I'm not going to have anywhere even close to a common second difference. 18, take away 6. All right, uh, 54, take away 18. I'm not going to have a common second difference. All right, so if you can't find a common second difference and you can't don't have a common first difference, you could come back here and look at this original table. You know, could I take 5 times something and get to 11? Could I take 11 times something and get to 29? I, I'm not going to have a common ratio in this first one. All right, but taking a look at these values, can you find a common ratio here? Okay, 6 times 3 is going to give you 18. 18 times 3 gives you 54. 54 times 3 gives you 162. All right, so I have found a common ratio. All right, when you find that common ratio, all right, then that's when you have an exponential function. Okay, so this one is definitely an exponential. Okay, now the other thing that might be a, 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 on this one especially might be a dead giveaway that you've got an exponential function. If you take a look at those y values, they are growing very large very, very quickly. All right, and so that kind of indicates that your exponential function, because if you recall, all right, exponential growth function, all right, the graph looks like that. So it gets really, really, really steep y values very, very, very quickly. All right, so that right off the bat might have given you a hint that you were looking at an exponential function. All right, now I've got one more example on here because this common ratio that I found on this one was not from the original table. It was from that first set of differences. I was able to get a common ratio. It doesn't have to be found right there. If you can find a common ratio right from the table, then you are good to go. All right, so that's what I wanted to do here on this one. You've got a one-ninth to a one-third. Okay, hopefully you can, you know, if you're good with your fractions, multiplying by 3. one ninth times 3 will give you 3 over 9, reduces to one-third. All right, one-third times 3, all right, gives you 3 over 3 or 1. One times 3 gives you 3. 3 times 3 gives you 9. Okay, so if you can find that common ratio right away from the table, then you know that you've got an exponential Function. All right, so this this one also is an exponential function. All right, and um, looking at these, unlike these, we they got really really large really really fast. In this one, that yes, they're getting larger, but not in, in such large amounts that it might stand out that it's an exponential function. All right, so um, four different examples there of determining your linear, quadratic, and exponential uh, models. Um, if you liked the video and it helped you understand this a little bit more, um, go ahead and share this with your friends so that maybe somebody else can benefit as well. Thanks.